Awesome. Uh, that was amazing, Austin, by the way. Um, hi, everyone. Hope you're having a great Friday. My name is Alex Behrens. Um, I recently joined Open Zeppelin and I head up product marketing for them. Um, a bit about me, I um, used to work at Hedera Hashcraft and I recently re-entered the decentralized space. I um, actually got connected to Open Zeppelin um, from Twitter, so never underestimate the power of a DM. Today, I'm going to be covering a 2021 Open Zeppelin recap and an overview of our latest integration with the Keeper Network. We've been shipping a ton of new products and services this year, so we want to make sure that the community has a good grasp on what we're up to. So our mission at Open Zeppelin is to protect the open economy. We do this by providing products and services that let you ship faster with lower risks. Um, our main offerings are contracts, audits, and Defender. Most of you have probably heard of Open Zeppelin contracts, which is the first building block for many people building in Ethereum today. Open Zeppelin also performs security audits, securing some of the biggest projects in the space. You can, you can also check out um, our public reports on our blog. Finally, a year and a half ago, we launched Open Zeppelin Defender, which provides a secure platform for automating your smart contract operations. Um, I wanted to share first uh, an analysis that we recently did um, of our penetration into the DeFi Pulse Index. That's um, 115 projects. One was admitted because um, we couldn't find stats from them. Uh, but we found that 68% of the top projects are using Open Zeppelin services, which we just thought was completely crazy and um, really just an amazing um, thing to find out. Um, to put this in context, though, um, Open Zeppelin is helping secure $72 billion out of the total $88 billion that is currently locked in DeFi protocols, um, or 82% of the total TLE. Um, moving on, I'm going to start off with an overview of our contracts over the past year. So contracts have been at the core of our business um, since its inception. Um, and although we did add contracts 3.4 this year, I'm only going to be focusing on um, the version four of our contracts for this presentation. Um, we are incredibly proud to announce that we passed 4 million downloads of contracts this year. Um, as you can see, our contracts team has been super, super busy shipping releases almost every month of this year. Kicking off with uh, 4.2, we released, or 4.0 that we released in March. Um, this release only supports Solidity 0.8 optimizations, um, and new features will not be backported to previous Solidity versions. 0.8 marks the end of the safe math era as overflow checks are now built into the compiler. That said, safe math is still available in a repo as a wrapper over the built-in overflow checks. This release introduces a number of breaking changes and most notably a reorganization of contracts in our directory. So watch out for that. Um, 4.1 was released in April. This release implemented two major features, UUPS proxies and the multi-call contract. Um, as most of you know, since the Berlin upgrade, there's been significantly increased cost of transparent proxies. This new update to contracts allows you to, to choose a custom proxy pattern that supports UUPS proxies. Then in June, we released 4.2 of the Open Zeppelin contracts library, introducing our latest work on governance contracts. Um, our team has been super, super excited um, to share this, as well as 4.3 is also going to cover governance um, and that's going to come out very soon, and we are so pumped to share that. 4.2, though, um, released ERC-20 votes and ERC-20 votes comp, uh, extensions for ERC-20 token, including vote delegation mechanisms essential for voting in governance systems like Compounds Governor Alpha and Governor Bravo. Additionally, this release introduced gas cost reductions, new helper functions, and the ERC-20 wrapper extension. Last month, we also introduced the Open Zeppelin Subgraphs Library, a library for building out modular dense subgraphs on top of our contracts offering. Um, but what are, con what are subgraphs for those who don't know? Subgraphs enable developers to build discoverable APIs by pulling data indexed from Ethereum and other blockchains. Um, instead of building proprietary centralized servers, dApps can limit their back end work by simply integrating the subgraphs APIs. Um, we chose to specifically create dense subgraphs, and this is viewed as um, one, of the, one of the more important aspects of building subgraphs um, in, in the community. So this is generally done by linking data types within a subgraph and pulling metadata from within the object. By, he heavily linking, by, he by indexing using heavily linked data types, um, you'll have more information to work with for analysis and debugging, which improves outcomes for developers, of course. Uh, we support several modules. Um, from our contracts library and the subgraphs. So we support ERC-20, ERC-721, ERC-1155, ownable, access control, possible, and time lock. And each module includes a schema of the corresponding entities, 
um, a data source template that listens to events and indexing logic in assembly script. Um, our subgraphs can also be assembled manually or use a compiler tool. Now to download um, any of these libraries, simply npm these listed libraries. Um, and if you have questions or issues, feel free to reach out to us on the Open Zeppelin form, but be sure to check out the docs first. And then last thing for contracts, I am super, super, super excited to present um, Wizard. We came out with this earlier in the year, um, but we haven't really publicized it much. And it is by far the fastest and safest way to build contracts in 2021. So as you can see here with Wizard's intuitive interface, um, you can create contracts leveraging the Open Zeppelin contracts library. Um, we support ERC20, 721, and 1155, and we are committed to keeping Wizard updated with all of our latest releases, including our upcoming governance release. This tool is perfect for power users and beginners alike that are just getting into the space. Um, we think that this tool is going to be just super powerful for anyone who wants to quickly build a smart contract. Also, um, if you head over to our GitHub, you can embed Wizard into any website using a simple script tag. You can try Wizard at wizard.opensupplin.com. So go and head over there if you are interested. Next up is our audits update. So this year, our team completed our 200th audit. We have a full slate for this next year and look forward to the next milestone. In Q2 of this year, our team um, conducted 13 audits for top projects, nine of which were published publicly. These latter um, audits, the latter public audits are available on our blog, and I'll have to link to that at the end of the audit section. We also recently welcomed a number of new auditors and a new head of security to our audits team coming to us from Ernst & Young, where he led their blockchain security department. So here's our schedule for this year. This is just the public audits. So of course, this is an incomplete list. Um, that said, we should be adding two more public audits that should come out very soon here. Um, to give an example of the issues that our audit team tackles, I'd like to highlight a vulnerability um, from Fay Labs. So on Sunday, um, May 2nd in 2021, uh, Fay identified an economic vulnerability in their uh, Fay ETH Uniswap pool. Um, this vulnerability, if an attacker was to take out a flash loan, trade a large amount of ETH for Fay on the Fay Uniswap uh, pair and increase the price of Fay, they could then allocate the function on the call, they could then call the allocate function on the bonding curve, which adds liquidity to the Fay ETH pair, reinforcing the inflated price. Then they would sell the Fay bought in step one back to the Fay ETH pair for the premium, pay back the ETH loan and keep the profits as an excess. Um, fortunately, Fay Labs reached out to us and we checked the vulnerability, validated it, and um, they quickly paused um, trading on the bonding curve, which prevent the exploit from being possible. There were no funds lost, um, and this is kind of a best case scenario for these types of situations. So to read any of our audits, um, you can head over to openzeppelin.com um, slash blog, and now it's blog.openzeppelin.com. Um, slash security dash audits, apologies for that. Um, we are also hosting a secure development workshop. We've already had two sessions. So the third session will be on August 26th, but you can use that short link there to join that. Um, and we will be posting recordings um, and recaps of this content on our blog. Um, the feedback that we've gotten from these sessions has been really, really great. So if you are trying to get better at secure development in Solidity, I highly encourage you to join these sessions. Finally, we have Defender, um, our secure platform for smart contract administration and automation. Um, Defender allows teams to focus on the unique product features rather than security. So we take care of all of these smart contract operations and automations that you might be having to normally build yourself. Um, administration mistakes on protocols and applications put users at risk. Um, with Defender, you can seamlessly manage all of this administration, including access controls, upgrades, and pausing. Defender is trusted by top projects like Aave, Balancer, Foundation, and more. There's a couple of main components to Defender. Um, first, there's admin, which you upload your smart contracts into. And admin acts as an interface to manage these contracts um, through one or more um, multi-sig contracts that are fully controlled by the signer's keys. So admin itself has no control over your system. 
Then there's relayers, which take care of private key storage, transaction signing, nonce management, gas price estimation, and resubmissions. If you combine relays with auto tasks, which I'm going to get to in one second, this means that you can automate just about all of your transactions inside Defender, which is incredibly powerful. Autotask allow you to automate your operations using a small JavaScript code snippet on a scheduled basis or triggering them via a public webhook or Sentinel event. Um, tight integration with Relay and Sentinels allows you to use Autotask to send transactions to, to react to events or automate regular workflows on your contracts. Sentinels monitor transactions on your contracts by using defined conditions on events, functions, and transaction parameters. Sentinels can detect direct calls, internal transactions, or events emitted by your contracts. You can choose to be notified via Slack, email, Telegram, Discord, or push data to Datadog and execute an auto task in response to a notification. So as you can see, you can pretty much manage your entire operation via Defender. Um, we've been rapidly trying to update Defender to make sure that is the best and most secure possible platform. Um, but we've also been listening to our users and trying to introduce features um, that they would like. So with that said, I'm gonna run through um, our change log for the last year. Um, in April, we added support for auto task conditions in Sentinels. This means that if an auto task condition is specified, it can be called via a list of matches in a given block and return any transactions that match its custom logic. Auto task conditions can cross-reference other data sources, query on-chain states, apply with custom matching logic and decorate notifications with custom metadata. Then in May, we add support for accessing key value stores in Autotask and the ability to query the latest transactions sent via Relayer. Our second May update contained a lot of features, um, which I'm not gonna completely run through, but we just a couple to give you an idea is manual replacement of Relayers via our API, uh, more visible active admin proposals and the ability to create Gnosis safes on all of our networks. Um, then in June, we added the ability to uh, manually cancel pending relayer transactions and the ability to time lock admin proposals via the time lock controller, um, which allows teams to further systematize um, administration like directly inside Defender. Recently, we added to the time lock contract as well as did a complete UI overhaul. So if you check out Defender and you go into admin and you manage contracts, you can see a beautiful new um, management system that gives you a much better idea of what is in your application. Finally, um, we have Chainlink Keeper Network. So last month we added support for the Keeper Network directly inside Defender. And we've been super pleased um, to see what every, everybody's been building as well as um, improving the, the UI of the process. So in case you don't know, Chainlink Keeper Network is a secure way to outsource contract operations to a decentralized network of professional DevOps for critical functions. Chainlink leverages a decentralized pool of keeper nodes so that teams can more securely automate maintenance, removing centralized processes. And by using the keeper network via Defender, you can further scale your decentralized application operations without sacrificing security. So these two use cases um, were provided by Chainlink and this is Aave and Synthetix, but I'm gonna run through another list of additional uses that um, you all might find interesting. First of which is executing limit orders on decentralized exchanges, minting tokens when reserves increased, harvesting yield from vaults, rebasing elastic supply tokens, triggering automated trading strategies, liquidating under collateralized loans, which is what Aave is doing in this example, um, releasing locked assets after periods of inactivity and topping out token balances that fall below a minimum threshold. This is just a sample list. I'm sure that the community has come up with far, far more interesting and crazy use cases already. Um, so this is how you actually go inside of Defender and register an UpQ contract. You can see the UI on the right there. It's super pretty. We are very proud of that. Um, first, you deploy the UpQ contract um, and verify the code on Etherscan. Um, then when you up upload the contract to Defender, Defender will automatically recognize the upkeep contract and prompt you to begin registration with Chainlink. Um, if it is on the testnet, registration should be instant, but if you're going for mainnet, um, then registration should take a little bit. Um, and there's some forms that you need to fill out. Once approved, you'll see your upkeep ID, link balance, active status, jobs pending, and last executions. Um, you can also deposit link directly inside Defender. So the entire Keeper process can just take place there. 
To make sure that your upkeeps are funded with Plank, Defender has you covered, as you can see in this infographic. Um, you can manually fund your upkeep via Defender, but if you have multiple upkeeps, this can get tricky. This code, this, um, as you can see in this diagram, um, it calls the upkeep IDs every five minutes to get the up, upkeep function and check the balance. If it's below a certain threshold, link will be sent via a relayer. Um, if you keep the funds in a single relayer, um, this can be used to manage all of your different upkeeps. I'll pause here for a few seconds, um, but this is the code that is powering um, this auto task. Um, you know, this might be a little bit tiny on, on your screen, um, but the key values to recognize here is the, upke the upkeep IDs that are being funded, the minimum balance, and the refill value. So the balance is under the specified value, then the refill function will run. If you're relying on upkeeps to power your application, then downtime is, of course, probably not acceptable. By combining Sentinels and Autotasks, you can check to make sure your contracts are being funded. In this case, a Sentinel will monitor events in the registry filtering for your upkeep ID. Then an auto task will check the value of the contract if the value is at the specified amount and it will be returned to a Sentinel where a notification will be sent depending on your logic there. Um, this is the code snippet that makes this happen. And I'm gonna pause here for one second so that you can read this. Alrighty, um, that is pretty much it. To learn more about the Chainlink Keeper Network and Defender, check out these links here. Um, we also have a technical walkthrough of what I just detailed there um, up on our YouTube, and I can't wait to see what guys are gonna build. Additionally, we are hiring, um, so, so we check out our website and view that short link to make sure that you see if any of these roles are right for you. Um, thank you, everyone. I look forward to see what you're building, and um, we are gonna continue protecting the open economy. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions um, via Twitter, email, and the Q&A. Thanks. Awesome, thank you so much, Alex. Uh, I know I personally relied on the contracts that Open Zeppelin offers to like get up to speed on what smart contracts look like back when I was uh, getting started. Uh, and the fact that Defender's already integrated with the Chainlink Keeper network is amazing. Uh, a bunch of people commented in the chat that the integration, uh, they're really glad the integration exists.